So we have some very interesting things going on with the battery pack in this Aria. Now, a lot of people have complained, right? How long we've had to wait for the Aria. And I was one of them. But let me tell you, when you dive into the technical details, which we're getting in today's review, you start to understand why Nissan took their time with this car. But it's here. And was the wait worth it? Well, that is what we're finding out today. Now, there's a lot to learn from the Nissan Aria. After all, this is the long-awaited release, the follow-up to the Nissan Leaf released nearly 14 years ago. So with more than a decade of electric experience, what do Nissan have up their sleeve for this one? I'm Luke and welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. Let's start by talking about this EV specific platform. This is the CMF EV platform by Nissan, a compact SUV car but let me tell you, the inside doesn't feel so compact because it's making use of this all-electric architecture, giving us a flat floor at the back and a flat floor in the front as well. Now, on the Leaf, that wasn't possible <laughs> 10 years ago, right? Nobody really cared back then, to be honest. But these days, you sort of expect this great interior room with an EV. How are they accomplishing that? Well, in the Leaf, they had brake piping, high voltage cables and cooling piping passing from that center tunnel, which they've now sort of rerouted very cleverly actually through the battery pack itself to give us this full flat floor. Now, there are actually two battery options, but more on that in a second. Two motor options as well, a front wheel drive, that's the standard, or you get a rear wheel drive option with two motors, front and rear. So Nissan have sold well over a million fully electric vehicles. So they've learned a thing or two about their electric motors. And very interestingly enough, they're actually changing the design from what we saw in the Nissan Leaf. So the Nissan Leaf had a permanent magnet synchronous motor, which to be fair, is what most of the industry is using. But for this Nissan Aria, they changed that to something called an EESM, Externally Excited Synchronous Machine. So what's the difference, right? So this new motor design actually has no rare earth magnets, making it a more sustainable choice and actually a cheaper motor to build, which should interest you if you need parts down the line. This motor is actually quieter as well. I know what you're thinking, like how can an electric car get even quieter? Well, this motor design is a factor of three times quieter when traveling at low speeds. Now, should you be cautious on this new motor design? Is that something to be afraid of, right? Well, thanks to the Renault and Nissan Alliance, this type of motor has already been tried and tested um, for several years on the Renault Zoe, which uses a, the same type of motor, just a less powerful one. They've just increased the power here for the Nissan Aria. So this is already a proven design. So we have some very interesting things going on with the battery pack in this Aria. So for starters, you get two battery size options to choose from. We have a smaller, so to speak, 63 kilowatt hour battery pack and the larger 87 kilowatt hour battery pack. Interestingly enough, um, those two battery packs, which again are under the passenger compartment, they are exactly the same. However, for the larger battery pack, what they do is they add a sort of second floor or a second level of battery cells um, underneath the space created by the rear seat. So it's literally just a second floor added on to the rear of it. But the rest is all the same. They are both 400 volt architecture packs and the cells are NCM, nickel, cobalt, manganese. We are seeing the switch to LFP, which I think we'll see from Nissan eventually as well, but this sticks to NCM battery chemistry. Now, another very interesting thing is that if you remember from my Nissan Leaf review, Nissan had a subsidiary fully owned company of theirs which was making the battery cells for the Leaf. They've gone away from that model now and they are subcontracting the battery cells to CATL. 
Chinese battery manufacturer who commands 40% market share of the entire EV industry. So those cells are coming from them and then being assembled into the pack by Nissan. Perhaps the most interesting feature of this new Nissan Aria is the fact that we finally have battery cooling in this vehicle. So the Nissan Leaf has, uh, didn't implement a battery cooling technology. It relied on the airflow coming through the vehicle to cool those battery cells. But battery cells like to be at that 25 degrees Celsius for two reasons. One, for safety. It also means we can run them more extremely if we're bringing that temperature down. And it also means they degrade a lot slower if they're maintaining that ideal battery temperature. This is a very welcome new feature in the Nissan Aria. They're doing this quite interestingly. So it's a liquid cooled system. They have an aluminum base plate at the bottom of the vehicle under the battery pack. And they're running the liquid coolant through that, which that aluminum has extruded channels. And they're running the coolant through that to maintain the temperature between the different modules. So this is a very welcome improvement in the Nissan Aria. You know what else is cool though? The future is electric merch. So if you want to help out the channel, of course, make sure you're subscribed and hit like if you're enjoying the content. But you can check out the store being linked below if you want to get yourself your own hoodie or t-shirt. And make sure you send me a photo of you in the hoodie or t-shirt after that. But moving on. So as we said, we have two battery size options in the Aria, which means the range differs between the two. The smaller battery pack variant gets you just under 400 kilometers of range. Which let me tell you, for Malta, for a small city like driving field, this is plenty, right? It means the average driver is going to have to recharge this vehicle once every two to three weeks, which is very ideal. If you opt for the larger, battery variant, particularly if you intend to go overseas and drive this car over the longer distances, then you're going to get 519 kilometers of WLTP range. Performance model, that's going to suck up a bit more juice from that battery pack. The range then drops to 492 kilometers. But if you are doing those road trips, you know what's important? Charging times. We'll talk about that in a second. Regen or regeneration is the vehicle's ability to recharge the battery using the electric motor when you are decelerating. And you get two regen options in this Nissan Aria. You get the B mode, which is turned on by pulling back on the, uh, on the, gear, on the gear lever here, or they have their E pedal. Now there's something very interesting about the E pedal, and I'm actually going to discuss it a bit further in my driving video, Out on the Road. So if you want to check that out, make sure you're subscribed, because that video is released straight after this one. If it's already out by the time you're watching this, link will be in the description below. So a few interesting things going on with charging here in the Nissan Aria. So firstly, one thing I like a lot, so we have AC, and DC, AC charging is what you're going to, be, going to be using the most frequently. DC charging, which we'll talk about in a second, is what you're going to be using in highway road trip situation where you really need to charge the car as fast as possible. But for most of the time, remember, a car is sitting idle and not doing much for most of its life. So you just need to make sure it's plugged in when you need to charge which, as we said, is going to be once every two to three weeks here in Malta with the average driving, um, how much we drive on a regular basis. So what I like a lot, though, is that the multi-spec cars all have a 22 kilowatt hour three phase charging option. This is actually quite rare in the industry and few cars actually come with the 22 and in most you can't even spec up a 22 kilowatt charger. What does this mean? So on any point in the public network, if you plug this car in, it will charge to full in just three hours and 30 minutes. This is on AC. We're not talking about rapid charging yet. So three hours and 30 minutes, you are good to go. So that's a very nice feature. I think most people will not appreciate it until they understand it. Most cars, the fastest you're going to get 11 kilos, which means you need double the time on that charging bay. So let's move now to DC. DC is the rapid charging option and this car has a 130 kilowatt charging power, which is not the fastest, but also not the slowest in the industry. It means you can charge the smaller battery 
or interestingly enough, even the bigger battery in around 30 minutes. So it's just enough time to, on your road trip, hit the restroom and maybe get a quick, a very quick bite to eat. Now, one very cool thing I learned in the research leading up to this video is the fact that on a Nissan Leaf, because it didn't have battery cooling technology, if you were, say, on a road trip where you're literally driving all day, driving, charging, driving, charging, right? Like I did my road trip from Leeds all the way down to Malta. If you want to check out that series, it's being linked above. Basically, on a road trip like that, you're going to drive, stop to charge. And what used to happen in the Nissan Leaf, because of they didn't have the battery cooling, is that the second, third, and fourth charging stops during the same day, the charge time literally doubled because it needed to maintain the battery temperature. It was slowing down the charging time. So if your first charging time, I don't know the numbers exactly, took an hour, the second one would literally take two hours. So they had this domino effect with the rapid charging. No longer the case in the Nissan Aria because that battery is using the cooling technology. It will maintain that 130 kilowatt peak charging power and does the 30 minute charge time for multiple charge stops during the day. Something I like a lot. But if you want to delve deeper into the different charging times, depending on where you're plugging in the vehicle to, if you have single phase and not three phase at home, etc., I do recommend the website evdatabase.com. You look up the model and you will have all the times, how long it's going to take to charge listed. Guys, it's been a long wait. But in the lead up to this video, I found so much technical information about the new Nissan Aria, which let me tell you, if the company making the vehicle is willing to publish such technical documents out to the public, which I don't always find for all the vehicles, to be honest, I think that's a sign of strength. I think it shows that you're ahead. If you enjoyed today's review, make sure you hit that like button below and subscribe because, as I said, more Nissan Aria content coming your way. Special thanks to Maverick and Nissan Malta for helping with today's review. But as always, I hope me and the new Aria have convinced you that the future is electric.